Hello everyone, so today we're going to be designing a very fun game of Slapjack, the card game, and I'm going to be doing it in C++, so this is how it looks like. It's a very simple implementation. You can see who wins, and let's get started. So Slapjack is a very fun card game where we're going to be implementing it with two different players, but we you split the deck between these two players, and each player takes turns by placing their card into a center pile. So whoever places a jack, they must slap it, and whoever's the first one to slap collects all the cards in the pile, and whoever gets 52 cards of the deck wins the game. So in our program we're going to be implementing three different classes. The first class is a card class, second class is a player class, third class is a deck class. So let's get started. So first we're going to start with our card class. So this is the class for a specific card. So a card consists of a suit and it also consists of a rank, right? So we have a constructor for the card, we have an overloaded constructor for the card which consists of rank and a suit. We have another function to see if the given card is equal to a jack. And so first I'm going to make a default constructor and I'm going to say this card is equal to ace of spades. And then for our other constructor, I'm just going to equate it to the rank and suit that's given into the function. And then for equals jack, I'm going to see if rank is equal to 11. If it is, return true, else just return false. All right, so now we're going to be heading into the deck class. So this is the class for a deck, 52 cards, right? So I'm going to first create an array of 52 cards, and then I'm going to make our constructor, and I'm also going to make a function to shuffle our deck, because that's what we need, right? We need to make sure we shuffle this deck and make sure it's not in an in, in order, make sure it's randomized. So first I'm going to be get uh, implementing the get and set function. So I'm going to be getting the rank of the card and getting the suit of the card, setting the rank, setting the suit, because these are private instant variables, right? So we need to make sure we have public functions to retrieve these variables. Now we have our deck class, so I'm going to be implementing our deck class by going through every single uh, uh, element in our array and then I'm going to be setting our rank to the value and then setting the suit to spades, clubs, diamonds, or hearts. And then at every four elements we pass by, I'm going to be changing that value to the next value. So I'll be incrementing it so that it's in order, in fashionly order. And now we're going to be implementing the shuffling part. So in this part, we're going to be implementing a current time random function. This is going to be implementing the seed of our random function. And then we're going to be do, implementing the random function for two different random uh, numbers, swapping these two random numbers in our array, and this will randomize our deck array and shuffle our deck. So this is simulating the shuffling of our deck. So now we have our player class. So for our player class, we have two different important data types, and that first one is the pile. So this is the pile, the player's pile, right? Um, and the second one is the name of the players. So that's represented as a string. So then I'm going to be declaring my two different uh, constructors for the player. Then I'm going to be declaring another function called the split deck function, which splits the deck into two different portions, one for each player. And then I'm going to be implementing another function which places the card from the player's pile to the center pile. So I'm going to be implementing the two constructors and then I'm going to be implementing the split deck function which splits the deck into two different portions, equal portions. So I'm going to be implementing that and I'm also going to be adding an index to the deck so we know if the deck is empty or not. So if index is negative one then the deck is empty, else it's not empty and we can implement the R uh, splitting deck function with that func with the empty function. So I'm first going to check if the deck is empty. If it's not empty, I'll then split the deck accordingly uh, for, uh, by implementing a for loop and then adding it to every to both of the player's vectors. So that's why I have the player other, which is passed in as a reference, and the deck, this deck, which is passed in as a reference as well, because we are changing these two instances of different classes. So since we're changing these two, we're going to be passing them by reference. And now the deck is empty, so index is going to be set to 1. And I'm going to be making an empty deck function which declares this deck as empty. So at every turn, a player places a, a card from their pile to the center pile. So I'm going to be pushing back that card from their pile to the center pile. And then I'm going to be deleting that card from the player's pile. And then to collect the cards, if the player slaps the jack first, they collect all the cards from the center pile, and then I'll be clearing the center pile because the center pile is gone and it's vanished. So that's how I implemented that function. Now we're on to the main program. So we're going to be putting everything together here. So I'm going to, I included all of the header files, the deck file, the player header file, and the card header file. And I'm going to be first making our deck instance. So this is our deck. And then I'm going to be making two different players. Then I'm going to be shuffling the deck so that it's randomized. And I'm going to be passing out the cards from the deck 
to our two different players and then I'm gonna be playing the game that's step three so um, first I'll implement a function called size of pile so I can see the size of the piles for these two people and I'm gonna be making a while loop saying if one of, if one of the players uh, end up with zero cards or 52 cards stop the game and so in order for our function to keep on checking that, I place that in our while loop condition and I have our vector of cards which is our center pile and then I have our int variable called round which represents whether player 1 is playing or player 2 is playing. So if it's 0, p1 plays. If it's 1, p2 plays. So p1 first places the card in the center, so I do that first. And then I check if that card is equal to jack. If it is, I simulate the slap. So since there's a 50% chance, I made a van rand variable and if it's 0, then p1 place if it's one then p2 place so it's a 50 50 percent chance and then i did the same thing for our round for our round when round is equal to one which is when p2 plays so i did the same exact thing and then i switched turns by changing round to one if it's zero and zero if it's one and then in the end i check which one which player's car, uh, pile size of pile is equal to zero so if p1 size of pile is equal to zero p2 plays else p1 uh, win sorry p2 wins else p1 is declared as winner so that's how my game kind of turned out and uh, this is how we check to see which player wins so p2 wins in this case or p1 wins in this case now we're going to be going on to testing so i'm going to be running this thing and i'll be showing you guys how it looks i place print statements everywhere and so I, you could see where the player placed what card the player paste, placed in the center pile and you could see who wins in the end so uh, when a player places a jack, you can see who slapped the jack first, right? So it's really cool. So yeah, thanks so much for watching and subscribe. Thank you.